There's a good feeling we get when we show up for others, whether it's a family member, a neighbor, or a local nonprofit we care. Comes more like, I mean, not officially, but more like a Montana. Now there is, with the Spinny Scrub, the revolutionary handheld spinning scrub brush that makes cleaning a snap. Make pots and pans shine, deep clean your grout and tile, even filthy shoes look like new. The Spinny Scrub is easy to recharge and store away, and with three detachable cleaning heads, you can relax and let the Spinny Scrub do all the work. Scan the code on your screen and order your Spinny Scrub today. A break-in could happen at any time, so protect your family right now. Get a complete smart home security solution that you can control from anywhere. With features like motion sensors, live cameras, and more. Plus, 24-7 monitoring is available. Call the number on your screen or scan the code to unlock your benefits. And get a free quote from trusted national brands like ADT, Vivent, and Ring. Now is the time to get a smart home security system before it's too late. If you're on supplemental oxygen, heavy and awkward tanks are a burden. Now you can leave home and leave the tanks behind with Inogen One, the portable oxygen concentrator you can take almost anywhere. Just press the button here and there's my oxygen. I could play golf again. I could go grocery shopping. I'm free again. I go anywhere with this. Look how small it is. And right now, you can try an Inogen One for 30 days completely risk-free. Your insurance may even cover your new Inogen One system. Call 888-484-1106. It's free. Your insurance may even cover your new Inogen One system. Call 888-484-1106. Welcome back. We have more timely tips and favorite finds here on Discover Northwest. And we're about to show you something really cool happening at the Seattle Aquarium. That will be our last stop on what's been a busy day. First, we hit the waters for an Alaskan cruise, not for the faint of heart. Then we traveled east, uncovering hidden history and finding new reasons to cheer in Spokane. We sip one-of-a-kind crafts in Oregon. And earlier, we told you a bit about Lake Chelan's excellent wineries and special things you can only do there in the spring season. If you like spending time outdoors, that's one more reason Lake Chelan is worth the trip. It's not just the wineries that put Lake Chelan on the map. Epic views make for the perfect backdrop for a world-class golfing experience. Choose between eight courses, all within just a short driving distance of the Lake Chelan Valley. Here's a tip, the Lake Chelan Golf Course is a longtime favorite for visitors and locals alike. And Gamble Sands was at one time voted the best new course in America. That's another one you don't wanna miss. The gorgeous terrain makes Lake Chelan an excellent destination for hiking trips, too. Explore more than 250 miles of maintained summer trails in the area, from family-friendly hikes to more challenging ones with a rewarding view. There's a little bit of something for everyone. So grab your clubs and your hiking boots and make sure to book your stay. Now for our last stop of the day, the Seattle Aquarium. You may have noticed this building across the street. It's been under construction for a while. That will be the Ocean Pavilion. Inside, you'll come face to face with sharks, rays, coral, and so much more. Outside, a beautiful new public plaza. And the aquarium area you already know and love isn't going anywhere. This is an extension of their campus. To better understand what's to come, let's go behind the scenes, somewhere normally off limits to guests. This morning we're standing in uh, the Aquarium's Animal Care Center. It is a state-of-the-art facility that we are able to uh, provide homes for a number of different animals, kind of the newest addition to Seattle Aquarium. So many of the animals that are currently living at our Animal Care Center will soon be moving to the new Ocean Pavilion building. My name is Andy Sim. I am the curator of tropical fish invertebrates at the Seattle Aquarium. Most of the animals that we have in this building right now are all, all tropical species found in the, in the Coral Triangle area of uh, the, the South Pacific. 
The coral triangle is a section in the ocean that um, involves Indonesia, Malaysia, New Guinea, Solomon Islands. It has about 500 different species of coral that are reef building corals, and it's some of the largest reefs in the world. And there's actually 57% of the corals that exist in the Coral Triangle, so it's very biodiverse. The corals were all grown here at Seattle Aquarium, so they are fragments taken from larger colonies back in, in habitats on the aquarium's Pier 59, Pier 60 campus and brought down to our offsite animal care center and be ready to, to move to the new Ocean Pavilion building. So it's a, it's a very important space for all of those animals to thrive. Right over here, there is uh, an Indo-Pacific leopard shark uh, that are calling this habitat home. And over here, we've got a bowmouth guitarfish on the far side of the habitat right now. They are super unique in that they look like a ray in the front and their body tapers down to more shark-like in the back. Uh, my name is Charmaine von Kriegenberg. I work closely with the sharks and rays, but most specifically our bowmouth guitarfish, which I have a tattoo of right here in honor of her. Um, they are critically endangered though. They face uh, habitat loss as well as overfishing a lot of times. Um, they spend most of their time in shallow coral reefs, kind of sifting around in the substrate, eating a lot of crustaceans. And they have super strange looking mouths that are really wiggly with wavy teeth that they use to crunch up the shells of lobsters and crabs. Our bowmouth guitarfish's favorite food is probably her spiny lobster, and she takes that and she could hear her crunching away as she chews on it as she swims around. She was diverted from a, a fishery in, in Taiwan. Uh, one of the things that we did look at was release to a marine protected area, and unfortunately there are not marine protected areas far enough away from commercial fishing centers that it made sense to return that animal directly to the wild. You know, our fear was that it would end up in, in another commercial fishery if uh, it was allowed to stay there. She has grown so much in the time that she has been with us, and I can't wait to see her move on to Ocean Pavilion so that visitors to the aquarium have an opportunity to get to know her and, and, and appreciate her. I am really excited about Ocean Pavilion opening because I think it's gonna be a really exciting time for Seattle Aquarium. It looks so great and will be a really, really cool thing for people to experience. I hope when people come to Seattle Aquarium, what they'll take away, some sort of spark or inspiration to, to help make a difference, to help make a change. One of the reasons to, to visit the aquarium is to really gain a, a better appreciation of the animals that are living, not only kind of here in our backyard in the, in the Pacific Northwest, but extends to that marine environment in our, our one world ocean. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for exploring with us. Until next time, safe travels. Find more information and links to all the fantastic destinations you've seen today at Cairo7.com slash Discover Northwest. Discover Northwest is sponsored by these travel partners. There's a good feeling we get when we show up for others, whether it's a family member, a neighbor, or a local nonprofit we care about. And it's not just about good feels. Volunteering or donating money to support nonprofit organizations helps everyone in the community. When you give what you can, great things happen for everyone. That's what Give Big is all about. On May 7th to 8th, visit wagives.org to discover and donate to nonprofits that are making good things happen in your community and around our state. Look your best with a tummy tuck at Anderson Sobo Cosmetic. Return to work in as soon as seven days. Payments as low as $186 a month on approved credit. Call today for a free consultation. 1-800-THE-FACE or online at 800theface.com. We all get a good feeling when we show up for others, 
Giving is supposed to feel good, and who couldn't use more of that? Give big on May 7th to 8th by visiting wagives.org to discover and donate to nonprofits that are making good things happen. This one shopping for insurance. Whoa. The unexpected can happen to any of us. That's why Select Quote making it easier than ever to settle your tax problems. Call the Tax Relief Helpline now. We are here to. Oh, hello, hello, new buddies. Today, we're pulling the curtain back and taking you inside Woodland Park Zoo. So cool. <laughs> new exhibits. That's the <laughs> New animals. Hi. And new adventures await. Good morning, sir. You're ready for breakfast. Ready for breakfast, I see. Right now. Yes, sir. On Cairo 7. Hey everyone, I'm Elle Thomas, and this is Wildlife, a look inside Woodland Park Zoo. Today we're gonna get social with some of our favorite species, including the guinea girls. Woodland Park Zoo's five guinea pig ambassador animals. They are fun, they are fierce, they are fabulous, and boy, they are chock full of personality. You know, animals are a lot like us in that way. Each of them is so unique, and they each have their own social circle too. From the actual lovebirds, to the occasional butting of heads. Whether you're building families or building lifelong bonds, there's bound to be a few ruffled feathers along the way. <laughs> Bringing animals like these together is a big part of life at the zoo. And like anything else, it takes a lot of very careful planning and strategy. For some, that starts with a species survival plan or SSP. Think of it like this. It's essentially a dating profile for each animal, full of genetics, their strengths, weaknesses, then they start speed dating, sending that profile to other zoos across the country, trying to find a perfect match. It's just like Cupid, but with a little less romance and a lot more science. The goal, to create a healthy, genetically diverse population in zoos for at least 100 years. That's actually how Godek and Batu here came together. And guys, just look at them. They are seriously a match made in heaven. Inside the orang closure, it's business as usual. Monkey business, that is. Godek and Batu filled their mornings with food and fun and their afternoons with full bellies and naps. But it's the keepers who turned this sky-high space into a primate paradise. So I've got a couple different types of enrichment today for the orangutans. This is a paper sack, so I've got a bunch of diet items. A dose of greens. So this is the same thing in this one. It's some sunflower seeds some peanut butter smears. I'd eat that for breakfast. <laughs> a treat cup full of sticky sweet goodness. And we'll go find a spot to stash them away in the yard. Strategically placed. I think I'm gonna climb up here. This keeper isn't afraid to take things up a notch, literally. They'll work on it all day. And top it all off with a few snacks, peppering the ground to surprise them throughout the day. That's it, and there we go. Pretty good Thursday morning. <laughs> Godek and Batu know the good stuff is waiting on the other side of those doors. And once they're open, it is off to the races. Darting out, Godek snags the first treat, tearing open that big paper sack. He dumps the salad and goes straight for the honey inside. Batu's up next, nabbing a pipe, wasting no time getting to the goods inside, a smorgasbord of smears. She makes short work of that before the popcorn catches her eye. Good thing she's got two hands. Now, after the mad dash is over, they start to settle down and settle in for the day, snuggling into a high up hammock to lay back and watch the world go by. Things are almost too good to be true for Godek and Batu, the perfect pair in their own little slice of primate paradise. But this did not happen by chance. This match made in heaven was actually a match made by science. It's kind of the gurus of the orang world, and they look at all the genetics of the orangutans in captivity in North America. And what they do is they basically play a little match.com with them. So after some math and some geneticists have figured out which animals can maintain that genetic diversity, they then let us know who will stay together. That's right, these Sumatran orangutans were hand selected to be together. And at the ripe old age of 14, well, they're almost the perfect age to be parents, but not so fast. Because before we can even talk about babies, the zoo needs to make sure they're ready. And in the great ape world, that means a lot of training and a lot of health care. Heart health is a big part of that. Okay. 
<laughs> Just watch how Godek puts his chest up to the mesh to let keepers know he's ready. Then it's a trade off. He puts his finger on the EKG machine so they get a reading and he gets a snack. Then it's Batu's turn. Pretty soon, they'll take those trainings a step farther, quite literally teaching Batu how to be a good mom. Then we would ask her to present the baby to the mesh, trade the baby. We would do different body tactile with her. We train her for ultrasound. So a lot of the same behaviors that you would need as a human mother, we would need to train her to do with us. And then what about Godek? Is there anything specific that you guys need to train him for before you can try or before they try to start breeding? Not as much him. Okay. <laughs> Typical. Not as much him. <laughs> but he's really good and he participates in the session and just so he doesn't feel left out and that we don't have to separate them, that we would have them actually stationed next to each other and taking part in similar trainings. Cool. Yeah, even though it's not necessary. But the orangs aren't the only primates that would make some pretty great parents. There's a chance we could welcome a new gorilla baby sometime soon too. Nothing to announce just yet, but gorillas are on an SSP and right now their survival plan recommends a kanji breed with Kuame, one of the zoo's silverbacks. So if anything happens, we'll be sure to let you know. Now in the meantime, there are two youngsters that you can visit right now. Kuame has a four-year-old son, Kitoko, and a two-year-old daughter, Zuna. Of course, not all animals like to be surrounded by family. Take a tiger, for instance. They are solitary creatures, with the exception of a mom being with her cubs, and that makes breeding just a little bit tricky. You see it pacing along the mesh. A big cat with big teeth and paws, and an even bigger personality. The alpha, the predator, it doesn't need a pack, and it doesn't want a pal. Unless, of course, that pal is a keeper with a spray bottle full of evaporated milk. I mean, come on, they're still cats, after all. Good job. After a snack, a quick bath, and a little cat nap, it's time to get back to pacing and protecting. Do you hear that? That's called chuffing. Okay, now listen closely, and you'll hear the other tiger chuffing back basically letting everyone know that this is his territory and that he's here, don't come here. Now you may hear two tigers, but you'll never see two tigers. So tigers are solitary cats, so they actually don't come together unless they are breeding. And that is exactly what they're here to do. Seven-year-old Azul. Good boy. And 13-year-old Boomy, a perfect genetically diverse breeding pair. Oh. We'd like to say destiny brought these two to Woodland Park Zoo, but technically it was a species survival plan. And the SSP said these cats would make a really good breeding pair. They haven't had offspring of their own, and so we'd love to bring them together to try and have some, some offspring of their own, and so that's where we came in. Here's the thing. Aside from that chuffing chit-chat you just heard, bringing these two together is about as easy as catching a tiger by its tail. Oh, in the wild, they're going to have their own territories, and they'll only come in contact with each other when they are breeding. We want to keep it as safe as we possibly can and introducing them when they're not fully in estrus or when they're not ready and receptive can be very dangerous. So um, we took time to understand her estrus cycle, to watch her behaviors, to take notes. So it's, it's a baby step process here. Yes, yes. After years of tracking hormones and behaviors, the stars finally aligned for a first date. This is called a howdy. They can see each other, they can smell each other, but they can't touch each other. Our biggest indicator is she kind of just ignores him. If Azul is interested, she makes sure Boomy knows it, staying by the gate, even rubbing her face against it. Now, when keepers see this, it means Boomy and Azul are ready to take the next step. You could call it a grown-up tiger sleepover, but um, let's give them some privacy here. It was so, so exciting. <laughs> Everyone in the building had like a little cheer together. We didn't know if it was ever gonna happen. Um, and so we were very, very excited. And so we will be so elated if we have cubs on the ground. Touchy. There's no baby in her belly just yet, but she's already doing ultrasound trainings with her keepers. So when that day comes, she's gonna be ready. The zoo has plenty of successful breeding programs. In fact, we've seen a few of them play out right here on our wildlife series. Do you remember these cuties from last season? Sloth bears Leela and Madhu were born on New Year's Day in 2022. In this video, they are so young, they can't even open their eyes yet. Well, they sure can now. But it's your eyes that'll get wide when you see what they look like today, and I can't wait to show you.
So this is kind of Muppet stage. And earlier this season, we welcomed a few new playful penguins. Okay, so penguins actually like to follow shiny things. Our mic pack here has a little green light on it, and look, they love it. You're looking at one of the zoo's five new chicks right now. So cute. <laughs> Speaking of which, can you tell which one is a chick and which one is an adult? There's actually a really cool trick to help you spot the babies. We'll share that with you later. Plus, now buttercups are firing with them. An antelope altercation. Don't worry though, this is totally normal. Keepers are going to explain why it's so important for the gazelle herd. And do you know the difference between a horn and an antler? We'll have the answer on the other side of the break. We all get a good feeling when we show up for others. Giving is supposed to feel good, and who couldn't use more of that? Give big on May 7th to 8th by visiting wagives.org to discover and donate to nonprofits that are making